And what's happened in this year, starting from the low point, I guess in uh, March, we've had a reflation of asset prices. Stock market's up. Junk bond markets are up. Junk bonds are up 50%. Uh, in, in this period of time. The, the depression scenario is taken off the table. The markets have opened up. Companies can access uh, money to refinance their debt and roll over their debt. And it's been a, uh, a, a true, um, truly important uh, phenomenon. But I want to distinguish between a few markets that are, I guess, rip-roaring back and everything's fine to some others that uh, are not doing well and are uh, perhaps uh, dead in terms of uh, uh, financing vehicles. And, and it's interesting, some of the markets that have died is uh, I'm sort of happy about. And some of the markets that are doing well, they're probably doing well for the wrong reasons. And uh, so the, the corporate markets we're all very happy with. Another market that is doing extremely well in terms of volume is the uh, mortgage-backed security market. This is the market where the uh, uh, new loans, either refinancing existing mortgages or uh, mortgages on new housing purchases, uh, get distributed. This market is running at its old levels in terms of volume, but we have one little problem in that the entity that's buying all of these mortgage-backed securities is uh, located in Washington, and it's called the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is, has bought 80% of the new production mortgage-backed securities. And you may be saying, well, that's fine, that's great, Aren't they doing the job they're supposed to do? There's a problem when you see any entity get more than its fair share of a market. I mean, we've got a bunch of sophisticated players, but 80 but 80 percent wind up with the Federal Reserve. There's a simple interpretation: they're paying too much. They're driving mortgage rates down as part of their policy. They're paying more than anyone else will pay in this economy. And so um, I'm looking for that uh, distortion to unwind. And so we're gonna have problems, a little bit of problems in the mortgage market as the Fed decides that it's bought enough. And uh, so let's see, we've got the Treasury losing money on Fannie Mae going in and making the mortgages that default. And we're gonna have the Fed losing money on the way out because they're paying too much. For the, for the securities in this policy of, of holding mortgage yields down. I don't know if they have anybody whose job it is to lose money at the Federal Reserve. I don't think they have that appointed who's the uh, um, portfolio manager, but that, that is going to happen. And it's gonna be very interesting how they, uh, uh, they uh, deal with that issue as, as all of a sudden they decide to stop buying. Uh, there's another piece of the mortgage market which is uh, in uh, adjustment, and again, it's these asset-backed securities. We got away from the viewpoint that uh, banks or finance companies would make a loan and keep it. Right now, they make a car loan and they sell it. They extend credit card debt and they package the receivables and sell it. They package student loans and sell that to the capital markets. Well, the capital markets have stopped buying. Nobody understands now. People are just stepping back from that structure. And we have to adjust in a couple of different ways. One would be that the financial institutions that make loans now go back to the old-fashioned banking and uh, hold the loans they make in an investment portfolio. So it's sort of an adjustment to get back there. Or we have to do a better job of convincing the capital markets that we're really putting good credits uh, together and uh, they can be, uh, be trusted. So there's, a, there's an issue there. We, there's, there's one, one uh, nice little story. There aren't going to be any more home equity loans because no one has equity in their home anymore. So that one we don't have to do any fixing on. Um, and finally, one little dark corner of the 
bond markets that uh, most people don't know about, but it's, it's been very important. It's called the, the repo market, the repurchase agreement market. And that's a market that um, uh, almost doubled. And I've been in the bond markets for 11 years, leaving in uh, 1999, and basically doubled in size in the time I had left. And I always scratched my head and say, how can this market be doubling in size? The rest of the um, related markets don't seem to be doubling that much. Um, and that was just a sign that the market was over levered, that there's a lot of players in here who want to speculate in the fixed income markets with borrowed money. And that's the repo market is a way of, of uh, uh, greasing that and extending credit to people who are taking risk. And what we've seen is that the volume in that market has come down 45%. And uh, I think that's actually a really good thing, that uh, the uh, process of deleveraging, um, I think, is over. We're now dealing with what are things worth, but sort of the panic coming from people who were uh, overextended in risky speculative investments in the bond markets, that's, I think that's over. So um, we have a mixture of good and bad, the, but the, I think the best news comes from the corporate bond market where people, uh, there is relief and uh, we are looking forward then to true recovery um, after this period of uh, stabilization. So I think, the, uh, I think we're on the mend.